and uh, welcome. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us this week as we're talking about enhancing connectedness among students, staff, and families in our schools. I am Ken Radiola. I'm the Mental Health Distinguished Educator at the Maine Department of Education. Um, and I'd like to briefly introduce our presenter today and our co-hosts. We have Amelia Lyons Rukema, who is our Climate Culture and Resilience Team Coordinator, who will be our presenter today. The, uh, we also have Susan Berry, who is our Health Education and Health Promotion Specialist, and Tammy Diaz, our, one of our school nurse specialists. Uh, as we continue on, I'd like to review the mission and vision of the Department of Education. It's a mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders, and by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. As an overview, um, we'll be doing our overview. We'll re be reviewing strategy four, having our small group discussions, reporting out, and then summary of what's to come next week. As a reminder, uh, we understand that every school is going to be in a different place regarding the strategies that we are reviewing from the Mental Health and Wellness Guide. Uh, we respect the position of every school and are very proud to have the opportunity to learn and discuss ideas for growing your readiness uh, to fulfill and implement the CDC strategies. As we begin, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll respond to these questions at the end of the presentation or in the summary that is distributed following the presentation. We'll also be dropping the, um, the link to the Promoting Mental Health and Wellbeing in Schools and Action Guide for School and District Leaders. We'll get that link into the chat so that people can, can review that as we're, we're going on. Then we uh, just wanted to say that we value the experience that each of you, your schools and your communities bring to this webinar. We wanna create a safe space to come together, discuss and share our experiences, our ideas and knowledge. This is meant to be an interactive and engaging experience. So we have a few norms to create a safe place for collaboration. We're going to try to assume, or we're not going to try, we're going to assume positive intent. Uh, we're gonna share the air. We're gonna contribute gems that can help the group learning. And we're all going to agree to both learn and to teach as we go along. And these group norms are, have been consistent throughout the, the webinars and will continue into our, our next section. Um, and at this point, I would like to um, give the floor to Amelia. And we really appreciate you being here today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ken. And thank you, everybody. I'm really happy to be here with you all and see how many are here. Um, today, our topic is enhancing connectedness among students, staff, and families. And a really quick reminder, this is not just about students. This is about everyone in a school ecosystem and in a community, right? We all want to feel connected to one another, regardless of our role in the school or um, outside of it, right? And so this term school connectedness is saying that each student's belief that the adults and peers in the school care about their learning and about them as individuals. That's it. Are there adults in my school building who care about me as an individual, right? And so this can happen and increase a sense of belonging when students feel cared for and supported both individually and as a school community. And some students, it is really important to recognize, may be more likely to feel socially isolated or alienated at school than others, right? Particularly if you have students of color in a majority white school, students with disabilities, LGBTQ plus students, any of those, um, any of those identities may really increase the likelihood that they have a difficult time with that connectedness between their peers and with staff. And so making sure that we can strengthen this connectedness and belonging in schools can actually be an awesome protective factor in building that resilience and promoting mental health and well-being for students and for the school communities, right? We talk about the ACEs, the adverse childhood experiences, right? And 
how we have on that side, you have your ACEs score, but then you also have your, your resilience score of what are all of those protective factors in your life. And all it takes is one solid adult who keeps showing up and keeps caring to really make a difference on that and be a buffer against the trauma that a child may have experienced, right? And so if we go to the next slide, it really focuses in on relate relationship building programs, right? So what kind of interventions can we do to strengthen connections between students, families, and school communities? What does this actually look like, right? The first one is communication, right? And not one-way communication, but really authentic two-way communication between parents or caregivers and school staff to build that foundation for creating positive relationships. So this isn't just communicating when a child is absent. This is also communicating when the child does something really great in class today, right? I know it's a lot, it's a lot of additional work, but those positive interactions can carry so, so much in building those relationships. So looking for opportunities for positive communication, um, frequent two-way communication, treating families like the experts that they are, asking for input and making change from that input, right? Um, recognizing that trust and respect really goes in both directions. It's not, I've, I've worked with a lot of, a lot of um, different communities. I mean, even in with medical providers, right? And they'll say, oh, well, this community, they just, they don't trust us. They don't trust doctors. We'll never be able to make any progress here. And when you dive a little bit deeper, it's very clear that the doctors also don't trust this community, right? So how can we build up that foundational piece to make sure it is that bi-directional relationship that's existing? Um, and making sure we're providing families with the maximum level of choices, autonomy, self-determination, dignity, and respect, right? And so we can do this by supporting staff through group sessions for teachers that focus on how to build those student-teacher relationships, um, how to collaborate with parents. We have an awesome family engagement specialist at the department named Melanie Junkins. She is available to come to your school, to your district, to your organization, and present on family authentic family engagement strategies. Um, but also helping to connect with parents and focusing on the importance of parent involvement developing those collaborative relationships and including classroom activities that are strengthening peer relationships or school-wide events that raise awareness about various student experiences and needs. So the regulated classroom is another great resource that's out of the Department of Education right now that really focuses in on how can we build that foundation of psychological safety so that these relationships can blossom, right? One practice that I love to highlight that, that is happening in Maine schools right now is the student-empowered social-emotional learning, um, where they have an activity called Some Days. This is so cool. If anyone's here from, I think it's Biddeford, Saco, Dayton, they're one of the big districts that does this. And at the start of the school year, every student fills out a form that says, someday at school, I would like to. And when I first thought of it, when I first heard of this, I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to say walk in on an elephant. Like, it's going to be ridiculous. We're never going to be able to meet these needs. But it was have lunch with my brother because they had different lunch periods. You know, it was have my mom come in and read a book to the class in Spanish and I can interpret it. Right. It was really, really beautiful opportunities for family engagement, for building collaboration, for building community. And my... um my step nephew, I guess is what he would be. He's one of the quietest kids I've ever known. And he, when I heard that he did a someday and I reached out to my stepsister and I said, what was his someday? You know, thinking it was going to be like trucks. They did have a lot of trucks coming to the school. Um, those kinds of, you know, a lot of kickball, they say. And his was to be teacher for a day to be. And he was the teacher's assistant for a day. And that is something that was the absolute, that would have been the last thing I ever would have imagined for him, right? But it was such a beautiful window into who is this child? How can we work into that and really support them? Some days are a beautiful thing for, um, for attendance because you never know if today is going to be your someday at school where your wish is granted, right? So that's just one little trick that I really love um, that has been developed with the TREE program. Um, all right, and then moving on to policies and practices. So we wanna make sure that these are intentionally including and centering students who are at a disproportionate risk for being marginalized and disconnected in school, 
right? So how are we doing this for all of our students? And when we look at engagement, how are we looking at it for different populations within our communities? Um, it's really important to make these efforts to collect the data, reflect on the data, and then change policies and practices if need be, right? So um, a really successful strategy, having affinity groups for students of color and LGBTQ plus students, making sure that you're, you have very clear anti-bullying and anti-harassment policies that specifically protect staff and students, um, trauma-informed policies and practices, especially related to disciplinary, pra disciplinary practices like restorative justice. Um, we have Stacy Barlow at the department who does restorative practices. She has restorative practice coaches all over the state, and they can come and do trainings on that for districts. Um, really awesome resource. And then I, I can't get through any slideshow without shouting out McKinney Vento. This is uh, the role that I had for the past four years at the department, and I just love it so much. So McKinney Vento is our homeless education program. Every school district in the country is required to have someone who's your McKinney-Vento liaison who helps families and students who are experiencing any kind of housing instability or inadequate housing. And one way in your policies and practices to make sure that you're centering students and you're ready to help the whole child is through screening for McKinney-Vento. So at the start of each school year, in your back-to-school paperwork, every single student receives a McKinney-Vento screener that just goes through some of the common situations that may lead to eligibility and making sure they get connected to the supports that they need to, feel, to continue to feel connected to the school when their home lives may be really up in the air, right? So how can we make that shift from being problem-focused to partnership-focused when we're looking at family engagement? And that really comes to continuing the two-way communication, having it be authentic and genuine, and building those spaces from that minimum of the psychological safety. We go to the next slide, please. We also wanna remember, can't forget to focus on equity. And what does it mean for a student to be connected and to see themselves in your school, right? So some ways to think about centering equity for enhancing connectedness could be making sure you're centering those students who are at higher risk, like we already talked about, recruiting and retaining staff who reflect the diversity of the student population. I know this is really, this is really hard, right? Um, there's a lot of opportunity for making more connections, for posting our jobs in new places, for meeting other community-based organizations to start to try to open up that conversation with more people so that we can have the linguistic diversity, the cultural diversity, the racial diversity, all the beautiful things that we have in our state to better support our, um, to better support all of our students. Vanessa, I love your question. So Vanessa popped in the chat. How do we find out who our person is for homeless? You have a McKinney Vento liaison that you can look up. Um, I'm hoping one of my DOE partners will get you the liaison lookup. Thank you, Susan. Um, but definitely connect to them and say, hey, I just heard about this thing. What can I do for to support students? Right this year, we have a pilot program for preventing student homelessness, where if your district opted into it, you may be able to help families to avoid eviction, to pay off their overdue CMP bills, to help with critical home repairs in the amount of up to $750 per student that's paid directly to the vendor. That is another unique, concrete thing that we can do to build that connectedness, where the school is saying, we are in it with you and we're gonna help you through this tricky time. And no matter what's going on at home, we wanna make sure that your child gets to school every day, feels belonging and connectedness with everyone here. Thank you so much for popping that in the chat. Um, so definitely focus on promoting culturally responsive and trauma-informed practices. Again, Melanie Jenkins is your go-to person from the DOE for this. She has uh, so much knowledge to share and really concrete ideas on how to work on this in our districts and what this can look like in schools. Um, and supporting family and community engagement and collaboration, right? So we wanna recognize student and parent feedback and make changes from that feedback, right? We all know when we get a staff survey or whatever it is, right? All the same stuff applies to us. 
if there aren't changes made based on our feedback, we're going to notice that. And that's not going to help our sense of belonging or connectedness at all. So think about how are you creating visibly safe and inclusive spaces in your building or in your classroom? How can you review the physical environment to see who's represented in the posters that are up, in the books that you share, in the curriculum that you have? And is it only focused on a lens of suffering, of less than, right? Is your Black History Month only about slavery, right? You're missing so much if that's the case. And how can we really empower all of our students to see themselves in all that we do and be able to dream big with that? So how can we incorporate flags or stickers or whatever it needs to be to show that it's a physical safe space? But also, and this one is, is again, one of my favorites, is recognizing that all families have a wealth of knowledge to share. So in the migrant education world, we call this funds of knowledge. And these are collections of knowledge based on cultural practices that are a part of a family's inner culture, work experience, or their daily routine. It's the knowledge and expertise that students and their family members have because of their roles in their families, communities, and cultures, right? So this might be, you know, my grandma taught me how to make chapati, right? Kind, like a tortilla kind of bread, right? And that is, that is a fund of knowledge that I have on measuring the ingredients and working this out and learning how to cook it and prepare it and serve it that could be brought into the classroom, right? Or we had a migrant student years ago, farm worker. She's from a farm working family. And every single year, she they followed the crops from California to Texas to Florida to North Carolina to Maine. And then she'd go back to Florida every single year. So she was enrolling in all of those schools every year. And when she came to Maine and she was up north and they got to the U.S. geography lesson in her class, she just lit right up because she knew all of the states that she had been through on all of her journeys every single year. And fortunately, that, that classroom teacher really leaned into that, right? That wasn't textbook knowledge. That wasn't from some video on YouTube. That wasn't any of those pieces. But she did shine the light on that student to be able to say, yeah, tell me about that. That sounds amazing. Teach us about what you saw in Oklahoma, right? How many kids in Northern Maine have been to Oklahoma? That's like a beautiful thing to be able to share in your classroom environment. And so funds of knowledge is just something that I'm really passionate about and I love it. And I could talk about it all day if anyone wants to talk about it more at another time. Uh, next slide here, we have implementation tips. So how are we engaging parents with deciding on how they want to build those relationships and what that's going to look like in our schools? Providing professional development for teachers on classroom management, on um, restorative practices, all of those pieces. And then making sure that any of the activities you do are fitting the needs of the families, right? So again, asking for feedback, reflecting programming that honors that feedback, and proactively addressing potential barriers. This one is really, really big, right? If I know, you know, you wanna have a school, family night at school from six to eight, I sure I would love to go, but I absolutely need there to be food for, for dinner for my family. And maybe I need interpreters. Maybe I need that translated so that I even know this event is happening. Maybe I need you to really make it clear that childcare will be provided that there's transportation available, right? Think about what are all the things that could be barriers? And instead of putting that onus on the families to have to come, you know, very humbly to say, hey, I would love to come, but I don't, my car's not working right now, right? How can we instead present it as, hey, there's gonna be some vehicles going around picking families up before any chance you need a ride, right? And so all of these pieces together are going to build a really, great foundation for that connectedness, which can hopefully lead to those senses um, of belonging, not just, again, not just for our students, but for all of us in our workplaces and with our work communities as well. That's all that I have for my slides there. Amelia, you are such a wealth of knowledge. I, I always love listening to you and I always learn something whenever I hear Amelia speak um, and love your passion. So now we're going to go into our discussion, our breakout rooms and have our discussions. 
So the discussion prompts for this week are based on what Amelia just shared and gone over from the guide. What strategies is your school or district using to assist teachers in relationship building with students or in relationship building with parents? What strategies um, is your school using to assist parents with developing collaborative relationships with teachers? How are we getting teachers and parents together? And then what classroom strategies are being used to support and strengthen peer relationship building? So how are we getting our, our peer, our students to connect? What are we, what are some strategies we're using? Fostering that student engagement in school activities as Amelia was just talking about. And what are some strategies being used out there to overcome the barriers of that particip 